Get ahead of postage rate increases this year with Stamps.com. It's like your own personal post office. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com code PROGRAM. The T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Tea is a fascinating and intricate topic, far more complex than anyone can master. Our expertise resides in storytelling by professionals who know the tea lands from birth and speak the native tongue. We believe that transparency is grounded at origin, which is why the Tea Biz Portal enlists 40 voices skilled in 12 languages to tell the story of tea. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. Kenya's KTDA chair resigns following Tea Reforms Conference. David Echoho later withdrew a lawsuit alleging his resignation was forced. Nestle announces a cost-effective sugar reduction technology useful in milk teas and juice fusions. And Arizona unveils a hard iced tea. Monster is next. A decade has passed since the trustees' sustainable tea program established benchmarks for tea growers supplying India's domestic tea industry. Director Rajesh Buyan joined South Asia editor Arvinda Anantharaman this week for a discussion on why 65% of India's tea now meets the trustee code. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Keilani Valley, Telawakili, Bogawanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. The reason for the abrupt resignation of Kenya Tea Development Agency Chairman David Muni Achoho, effective July 14, remains a matter of speculation. Achoho submitted a one-sentence handwritten letter of resignation on July 13th, shortly after the conclusion of a tea reforms conference chaired by Kenya's Deputy President Regathi Kachakwa. No reason was cited. Achoho was elected to the post two years ago and awarded a contract that expires in June 2024. Achoho immediately filed a lawsuit alleging he was coerced to resign. Enos Nijiru Nijiru was named chairman the following Monday. People's Daily reported that Gilbert Gethay, a director at Matara Tea Factory, said, quote, RTDA has structures and rules that govern it. Achoho was not subjected to the normal processes of removing the KTDA national chairperson from the office. The director's opinion and that of the farmers he represents were never sought, end quote. He said farmers reported higher earnings, on-time payments, and subsidized further during Achoho's term. Since he was elected chair, there have been no administrative actions taken against him or complaints regarding the execution of his duties, according to Business Daily Africa. The following week, Achoho notified the court of his desire to withdraw the suit. The agency faced strong criticism from Carrico County farmers and tea industry principals during the conference, which was called to quell violent protest, vandalism, and theft. KTDA buys and markets tea on behalf of 630,000 smallholders, an additional 320,000 farmers in Kenya supply green leaves to private factories in Bome and Carrico counties. Business Insight 
The deputy president announced that former Kenya Tea Development Agency directors who were prevented from participating in the 2021 factory elections will be eligible to contest sitting directors in an election scheduled for April 2024. Quote, why should we stop them from running? Kenya is a democracy. Let them run, and if they messed up, the farmers will reject them. And if they did a good job, they will be re-elected, he said. The patented Nestle enzymatic process reduces intrinsic sugar in beverage ingredients, including milk and fruit juices, by up to 30%, with minimal impact on taste and texture. The sugar-reduced ingredients are then used in recipes for various products. There is no need to add sweeteners or bulking agents to replace the volume of the eliminated sugar, according to the company. In milk-based tea, the sugar reduction method increases prebiotic fibers. The first clinical studies have shown that these fibers can support the growth of multiple beneficial bacteria, leading to a favorable microbiome composition in healthy adults. Makers of tea and fusion juices on ready-to-drink teas may benefit. Nestle Chief Technology Officer Stefan Palzer says, quote, Sugar reduction across our portfolio remains a top priority. This new technology is a true breakthrough as we can reduce sugar without adding sweeteners while preserving a great taste, all at minimal cost increase. We are now accelerating the global rollout across formats and categories, end quote. The sugar reduction was first piloted in cocoa and malt-based ready-to-drink beverages in Southeast Asia over the past year. Nestle has already introduced it in factory lines for cocoa and malt-based powdered beverages such as Milo across several countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Since 2021, sugar reduction technology has been applied to more than 200,000 tons of cocoa and malt-based beverages. Arizona unveils a hard iced tea. The new line of canned tea contains 5% alcohol by volume. The top-selling brand in the U.S. and the largest real brewed green tea brand by volume features ginseng extract and honey. The peach flavor matches its non-alcohol twin, and its brewed black tea version is flavored with lemon-inspired citrus notes to create an adult version of the flavor fans have come to know and love, according to the company. The blends were first introduced in Canada in 2020 with premium vodka and a half-and-half lemonade. The tea is sold in the familiar 22-ounce cans at a suggested price of $3.49 U.S. Initial markets include Florida via Southeast Distribution Company. Business Insight Monster has also announced a beverage alcohol line in the flavored malt beverage category. Nasty Beast Hard Iced Tea will contain 6% alcohol in four flavors. Arizona countered with a Marvel Comics-inspired LXR Hero Hydration Energy Line in 16-ounce bottles. Arvinda and Intheraman in Bengaluru reports on tea auction prices for sale 29. India Tea Price Report for Sale 29, the week ending 22nd July 2023. Overall, 17,762 tons of tea were on offer this week, with a cumulative sale volume of 69%, and an overall average price of 187 rupees a kilo. In all, sale 29 was similar to the previous week in North India. Kolkata continues to see good demand for orthodox tea, fetching an average price of rupees 226 a kilo. Darjeeling did better than last week, with an average price going up by over 100 rupees, but sale volumes remain at little over 50%. Guwahati saw good demand for leaf and dust, similar to sale 28. In the south, the overall sale volume was 59%, an average price of, 200, of 109 rupees a kilo. It was a 
high volume of unsold teas in Kunu attributed to a bottom price limit that was imposed by bottle leaf associations. There's also been a drop in crop because of unfavorable climate conditions. Export demand continues to be subdued and all these factors have impacted the South Indian industry. In Kochi auctions, orthodox leaf prices continue to decline and sales and prices were lower than last week. Dust continues to do better, with blenders absorbing more than half the CTC dust in Kochi. Exporters were active for orthodox dust. In crop and weather, rainfall continues in North Bengal and Assam. With heavy rain expected in a few places, in the southwest monsoon has been active in the Nilgiris and over the Western Ghats. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Nish. I grew up in an organic tea farm and I founded Nepal Tea Collective in 2016. Tea is not just a beverage for me, but a catalyst for social change sustainably empowering hardworking artisans like my parents for the past 30 years. I'm on a mission to make the whole world aware of the goodness of Nepali teas and the good that comes from supporting growers in this remarkable land. If you haven't tasted Nepali teas yet, you're missing out. Our award-winning teas are making headlines. Find out why. Visit Nepal Tea Collective's website to get a free sample of this extraordinary taste of the Himalayas. That's nepalteacollective.com. Or just send me an email at nish, N-I-S-H, at nepalteacollective.com. Cheers. A decade has passed since the Trustees Sustainable Tea Program established benchmarks for tea growers supplying India's domestic tea industry. Director Rajesh Buyan joined South Asia editor Arvinda Anantharaman this week for a discussion on why 65% of India's tea now meets the trustee code. Trustee. A sustainability code and verification system for Indian tea turned 10 this month. So we caught up with Rajesh Boyan, Director of Trustee, to talk about the challenges of the Indian tea industry and the interventions the Trustee has been able to bring in for the last 10 years. Thank you so much for joining us at TBiz, Mr. Boyan. And firstly, congratulations on completing 10 years of Trustee. That is a milestone. And while that's the context to why we're having this interview, I just wanted to ask you to get started with taking us through what trustee is and an introduction to what trustee is about. Yeah, thank you, Aravinda, for having me in this discussion. And I'm glad to talk about the trustee program and why this milestone is important. Globally, sustainability has been one of the major emerging challenges for all the agro commodity supply chains. and Tea is a part of that. And uh, Indian tea is, is the second largest tea production of the world comes from India. So, so producing tea in a sustainable way is, is, is also critical from a global point of view. The trustee program was launched 10 years ago and it is unique in the sense that it was a program which was conceived, developed and completely launched in India itself. So it's, it's the Make in India program, if you'd like to call it that. And the reason why there is widespread acceptance, one of the key things is that since it was launched by the industry itself, so the acceptance levels are better. Other one is the program has elements which are specifically designed to address the Indian context for tea manufacturing. So that is another very important thing why we think that the producers and the buyers are finding value in the trustee program. And having completed 10 years and having come to a coverage of 65% of tea produced in India, I think that kind of speaks volumes for the progress of the program and how the industry is working with us. And where would you say you've seen the most challenge in the last 10 years in terms of the interventions you've needed to bring in? One of the interesting things about Indian tea is that Indian tea is around now. They are celebrating the 200 years of tea in Assam. 
So it's been around for a long time, which actually means that there has to be elements of sustainability built into the industry itself, the, into the DNA of the industry. Otherwise, the industry would not be working for so many years. But what we needed was to bring a sharper focus and a method into the actions and also fill the gaps where more could be done to address these three pillars. So that was the transitional change which we found as as a challenge and also the industry was very willing to adopt that. So the, the transition from the practices that we're doing to bring them into focus, to put them into a method and to bring an element of continuous improvement into the activities and also opening the thought process that business sustainability, all of this come together. So we need to have a very very focused approach, understanding that all these elements come together to create a successful business and successful people, happy people and, and, and the prospering environment all contribute to each other. So that, that was the thought that we are trying to bring in. And then interestingly, last few years with the small folder farmers or what we call small tea growers coming into the picture in a big way, uh, we found that there is a lot to work with them to to also bring them into a sustainable agriculture process because these farms are maybe 15 years 20 years old unlike the larger gardens which are more than 100 years old so sustainability for them means how they can have that farming continue successfully from generation to generation and another 100 200 years so that I think is a, is, is an is an important challenge, and we have been largely successful in bringing this ethos to the small farming community also. And and that's part of what makes it complex, right? The fact that we have the small tea growers, the segment, the bottling factories, and the large estate, and each comes with its own set of you know challenges, potential, opportunity, and all of that. How then do you are you able to address this this sort of complexity and across India as well. So it's vast in terms of volumes and complex in terms of, you know, regions. And how are you able to bring these varying, you know, factors into a single umbrella? I think from an Indian tea larger perspective, the small tea grower community and the larger gardens complement each, each other. We are seeing an increasing trend where Many tea gardens are processing tea from the neighboring small tea growers as well as their own tea. So this is a testimony to the fact that these two segments of the business are able to merge their interests for a common goal. So, and in a way, the challenges of sustainability are similar, but I would say is more pronounced for the small tea growers because they have a very limited bandwidth to respond to critical challenges or very sudden adverse impacts because of their smaller area and smaller production and their financial abilities. While we find that we have a common template for sustainability in, in, in both the segments, the small tea growers need a different kind of approach and, and, and the different hand-holding and learning atmosphere. So we have actually developed within the trustee code, something called the small tea grower sustainability portion, which addresses specifically the requirements of the small tea grower section. But overall, all of this contributes to the larger Indian tea industry. So I think in spite of the differences, both of them will be able to you know, work well when they work within the ambit of the trustee program. And that that's probably what will be the strength of the industry, right? to be able to bring these two segments uh, together. And if you look back at the last 10 years, where would you say trustees had the most impact? I think one of the areas where we have been able to bring in is a structure and system in the operation. The other one is focusing on the legal compliances, which have a direct bearing on, on, on individuals, human rights, on mandated wages, on mandated benefits. Because the trustee program, as I said, being made, being prepared in India, we have all the Indian legal requirements as a part of the compliance. Now, what happens is when we go in and engage with an, with an entity, 
then we are able to have a structured approach to make sure that full compliance to the legal requirements are there or if something is missed then that is covered so in a way while we are able to bring benefits to the workers we are also able to provide a security and business continuity guarantee to the business so it it so ensuring we have a very structured systematic way of looking at how the compliances are there if there are any gaps in the compliances now <clears throat> these compliances ensure that the business is also run without any interruption from a legal point of view and same time delivers benefits to the employees so it's a win win for both sides when we look at it so i would say that's an area where i think a systematic approach is helping all of us and looking ahead where do you see the need for the most intervention i think now the time has come to look at climate smart agriculture look at practices which can be gradually changed so that we are able to adapt and more than adapt become resilient so we have these very extreme weather events and most of the tea planters tell me that their understanding of how the seasons operate are actually not translating onto what they're seeing on the ground and therefore there are certain practices which we our new code our revised code that we have just launched on the 11th of july that prescribes practices which helps smallholder farmers as well as tea gardens to kind of safeguard against severe impact of any climate change events so that i think uh slowly moving our practices from what we have been doing earlier gradually moving to climate resilient practices will will bring a long term benefit that they will be able to find kind of protection against the adverse impacts of these events and these events are happening even as we speak it's happening everywhere across india and we have to remember that for a industry which is 200 years old we have to move in a very structured and gradual way but we have to begin those practices to be able to to bulletproof ourselves against these adverse climate impacts so is is the vocabulary changing i mean is what constitutes sustainability i mean is is that evolving with you know the changes that are coming up i think one major change in in the thought process which actually the trustee code was one of the first to address is that sustainability is not a stand alone event sustainability comes in a approach where the community the environment the people the business all come together to deliver the goal so in isolation it cannot be achieved it has to be a holistic approach more and more people and more and more businesses and supply chains are realizing that that is the fundamental connect that has to come into what is being done every day to be able to deliver so that the people who make up the supply chain the people at the bottom of the pyramid have to be equal stakeholders in in what is happening have to equally benefit then only the benefits of sustainability can be delivered all across the supply chain and and that sort of comes through when you look at the trustee council right it's it's it's, it's got representation from every segment and everybody so so when the trustee position was set up it was with lot of thought that a multi stakeholder council was put in place because even at the inception of the program way back in 2013 it was done through a lot of industry wide consultation so that spirit of multi stake holder inputs was always there in the program so when it became we became a com- company a registered company we thought that the stakeholder council has to be created with a legal role in giving inputs to the philosophy and the direction of the program so that that voice of the indian tea fraternity is not lost when we go ahead so we gave us formal role with a multi stakeholder council and uh, all our decisions and all our long term strategies are uh, kind of formulated and kind of approved by the council which which helps us when we go out and meet meet the tea community when we propagate our program because it has come out through the approval of the larger tea fraternity and and now that now 65% of the production is trustee verified isn't it when do you think 100% can be achieved 
I would say 100% is not our goal and never has been our goal. Trust is a voluntary sustainability standard, right? And as long as it meets the business philosophy of the organizations who opt for the program, we are there to help and support. So it has never been a goal and will not be a goal because we think that the basic voluntary nature and the beneficiaries should find some value in what we do. And there are various types of businesses, various segments who do business in various ways. So trust is one of the options for them to carry on their business. So I would say we are happy that we are growing, but we really do not have any ambition of, of being 100%. What can we expect to see in the near future, you know, from trustee? Are, are, is there anything in the pipeline that you'd like to talk about or share? So three very important focus areas that we are going to do, look at when we go ahead into the next 10 years, so to say. So one is regenerative agriculture. We would like to be the people who bring these practices onto the ground. Trustees building up capability also to deliver this to the industry. The other one is on technology, how we are investing heavily in, in, in technology, we are investing heavily in, in IT to be able to bring these benefits to people like the smallholder farmers and some of it is already now being seen that's happening. The third focus area is safety of the workforce, especially the women. Now, women, as we know, constitute more than 50% of the workforce in the tea garden. And there is legal protection for them through the Posh Act. But on the ground, we find that there's a lot to be done in terms of sensitizing all the women workforce, even the management about their duties, the women about their rights, what constitutes harassment. So that's going to be a very important focus area. In fact, we are partnering with an organization called Women's Safety Accelerator Fund with the intention of getting a deeper impact of our work in the tea garden. So that's that's an indication of how important for this, this facet of women's safety is for us because a safe and secure women workforce, I think is very, very important for the tea industry to progress. That sounds like another busy decade ahead, isn't it? How can consumers, how can tea drinkers, you know, access the benefits of what trustee brings to the industry? How do you link back to the consumers? So, so far, the trustee certification was limited to the wholesale trade. So producers of tea would be certified and the buyers of tea in bulk would who prefer sustainably produced tea would buy from these producers. And therefore, the consumer was not part of the sustainability dialogue. But it was always the goal of trustee that we have to reach the consumer because the end beneficiary of everything that we do is the consumer and the consumer is always important for us. So trustee has launched a program called the seal on pack, which means uh, retail packets of tea will have the trustee seal. So producers who retail packeteers who buy trustee verified tea and then pack trustee verified tea will be able to put the trustee seal on their pack and the consumer who buys this pack will be able to understand and feel the fact that they are they are buying a tea which promotes safety and livelihood and environment across the supply chain so so there are a lot of consumers today who would like to contribute to the well-being of the supply chain components, especially the lower end and also do good for the planet. So we are also running a, a campaign, uh, a campaign educating the consumers about what trustee is all about, what it means to buy a pack of sustainable tea. And, uh, and we will be having this connection and this campaigns going forward in, in a larger way. And, and we are very excited that we're able to give the end consumer an opportunity to have a say in and, and understand what trust is all about. And I think globally, there is a very clear trend of an increase in the demand for sustainably produced products by the consumers. And this trend, I'm sure, will also be in India. And so people who sell products with the trustee seal and therefore 
encourages the trustee program to deliver its goals, I'm sure they will find a connect with the right consumer. And when when will the products, when will the steel on pack be seen in the markets, in the packets? So certain uh, retailers have already started putting the seal on the pack and it is and, and, and more and more of such packs will be available on the shelf. And uh, trustee has this process by which there are rules and regulations which which have to be followed and for a retailer to be able to claim to be trustee verified. And organizations which meet these and and work with us and we have this two-way commitment they are the ones who put that seal on the pack so more and more will be there we are seeing some on the on the shelves and i expect in the coming years more will be there for the consumers as a choice i think it's something for people to start looking looking up, yeah. looking up and looking for when they shop we, we really look forward to that connect with the consumer yeah i think it's about time and uh, yeah but thanks so much for taking the time out to talk to us and this is and good luck for the next 10 years too thank you arvinda thank you for having me intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts Remember to visit the TBiz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Produced by Adavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.